All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eric Garza, and I'm here with Mr. Shinad. Guadalupe Rodriguez, howdy. And today we're gonna be talking about our uh, little project that we've, that we've been working on. Um, the focusing question that we developed as a team was, uh, despite agricultural advancements, why is the evolution of herbicide resistant outpacing human innovation? I'm gonna go ahead and get this one. Uh, so some of the recent events that we actually found uh, that uh, we were interested in was the crops are being threatened by invasive herbicide resistant weeds. Um, and this will of course cause harm and crop yield loss. Um, other events, uh, we're having uh, wheat compete against crops and uh, weeds have developed resistance to many existing herbicide options. And of course, there's uh, new herbicide discoveries have plummeted because um, we're pretty much being delayed on uh, new herbicide research. Uh, another interesting uh, recent event that I found was the Office of Indiana State Chemist announced uh, a 2020 dicamba restriction. And they specify that the labels must state uh, do not apply this product after June 20, 2020. And we're talking about dicamba right here. Um, and lastly, another recent event that I found was uh, herbicide resistant. Of course, it's a growing uh, problem um, because plants are developing uh, ways to outrun herbicides. And so some of these plants are actually becoming resistant to several herbicides, not just only one. So, and those are some of the events that we found so uh, we're, we're going to follow this uh, iceberg diagram. Uh, we're going to have, um, it says there, we, we got events and then uh, talk about more about trends and patterns and then uh, the structure, the, the business structure, the organizational structures, uh, interpersonal structures, individual structures, uh, which are the mental models. <clears throat> and uh, here we, there's a, this is our main uh graph, you know, per se that, that, that we can use because um, 1952 is when, when uh, we had two, uh, or not we, but uh, globally, they, they found the first two uh, species of plants uh, developing resistance. And if, and if we look forward, I mean, if we look on uh, to today, there's like over 500 uh, species of plants with, which uh, developed uh, uh, resistant to, uh, to, to uh, herbicides. <clears throat> Another of the uh, trends that we found was the pesticide usage. And uh, as we can see in the 1960s, we had around uh, 50 million pounds of pesticide being used. And of course we can see it increase and decrease over time. Now some of those decrease have actually found out that it was due to technological advances. And so that's why you see some of those uh, decreases there but it is constantly keep using uh, herbicides. Uh, by the year, this, this data only goes up to 2008, but it was roughly around 350 million pounds uh, in 2008. And we can see that depicted on the blue uh, for the herbicide usage. Okay, and in this one, we got uh, the headings of pesticide applicators, applications to wheat, corn, soybean, and potato and uh, the here we can uh, we illustrate the uh, which uh, chemical we got that uh, glyphosate uh, 2,4-D and, and dicamba and this is kind of a uh, how many pounds uh, I mean how many how much uh, per thousand pounds has been used throughout the years yes we can see on this graph that 2,4-D uh, <clears throat> and dicamba from 1990 to 2002 was being used heavily but uh, the little red bars in 1990 starts increasing and that's actually glyphosate. And up to to date in 2009, the last recorded um, is the mostly or the whitelist used uh, herbicide uh, to control our weeds on the fields. Um, in here, we wanted to compare the price indices between um, farm uh, inputs uh, the two bottom lines, the uh, light blue and the yellow is the crops and the pesticides. And then we see the gray and the orange, which is the fuel energy and wages. Those are the two mainly ones that have actually gone up significantly. 
Um, but the pesticides are still going up. Now, we wanted to see if if uh, the wages and the fuel or anything of that uh, input is actually increasing the use of pesticides or herbicides in this case, or what is actually driving the heavy use of herbicides. So uh, trends over time, um, we've got uh, dollars nominal and, and real uh, dollars in 2008, and we can see that, that we see a, a steady increase, increase or, or you know, uh, upwards trend that of uh, of money spent on uh, herbicide uh, from 1960 to 2008. Now, some of the uh, structure, of course, going to be the economics and the management. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, we we pretty much keep finding out that the short-term solution for the pressure leads for farmers to rely heavily on herbicides. And that's of course to prevent any uh, potential loss and to have good quality yield of the, uh, of the crops. Now also uh, resist, uh, resisting crops development. Um, it's, it's, it's slowing down due to the fact that uh, we're using too many of these herbicides and farmers are relying on this and using it too much, which keeps uh, adding to the list of herbicide resistance. Um, the frequency use as well um, and the timing of application, it's another issue that we're seeing presented by these farmers. Um, and then uh, in policy, uh, another uh, issue we, we see with, with the growing trend of, of uh, pesticide use and resistance, is the policy. Uh, we have uh, the production incentive supports a few annual crops. Uh, specializing in chemical requires additional training and monitoring, adding workload pressure and labor costs to farm, farmers. to farmers. Now the uh, <clears throat> one of the main mental models that we're seeing is that farmers are relying too much on herbicide because according to them, it is the most effective tool available. Um, and of course, it's, it's understandable, but at the same time, the more they use it, uh, the more we can create uh, herbicide resistant weeds. And so um, it, it is in a way helpful for them, but in the long run, it's not a good solution for them. So here we have created our, our, our big picture. Um, as you can see, we've actually still working with some of the variables to try to um, incorporate incorporate, and figure out some of the archetypes within the uh, our big picture. Um, the main, uh, I guess, variables that we found out has been the uh, frequency of herbicide treatment, uh, the herbicide quantity applied per acre, um, and uh, mostly as well, as well the weed pressure felt by the farmers. And lastly, the pressure on farmers and farmer stress, which are the three main, were the four main leading causes of why farmers heavily relied on herbicides. And uh, this uh, structure archetype, uh, this is um, one of the archetypes that we that we found is uh, fixes a backfire. Here we we've got a bouncing loop. Uh, Increase application rates, reduce immediate weed pressure. Uh, you see, we, we start to uh, we have a increase in weed pressure, so uh, the rate of herbicide use is increased, and this lowers the the pressure of weed. And, and this is only a, a short term solution. Um, so, but the long term uh, solution that that uh, that we can utilize, or you know, it, you know, it should be a goal is the effectiveness of, of coverage of all species. Uh, trades. So uh, this uh, this loop, uh, this uh, reinforcing loop, uh, as as the rate of, of of herbicide increases, the risk of misapplication. Uh, people might not read the label properly. They might uh, instead of uh, you know they'll say, hey, I want to increase um, the the kill uh, percentage, so I increase the rate or how much you know the added to the solution and uh, a lot of times it doesn't work, so this kind of helps uh, the the whole thing about uh, 
the effectiveness of of uh, of, uh, of chemical. Uh, and then we go on to uh, as the effectiveness of coverage of all species traits goes up, and we population resistant to herbicides uh, go down, and then the, and the pressure also goes down. And lastly, one of the uh, mental models that we've uh, found is that, of course, uh, farmers believe that herbicides are the only tool available to handle weed problems. And so, of course, that leads into increased frequency applications, which then the increased weed resistance makes alternative systems look less able to address the problem. And so you're caught into that uh, mental model that herbicides are the only uh, reliable uh, issue or the uh, only reliable uh, management tool here and so they keep using herbicides but uh, they're they keep creating herbicide resistant weeds and so that's the main issue they their mental model is just not changing and so far uh, can you go go back to your uh, fixes a backfire right there uh, okay Walk through the balancing and reinforcing loop again, because I think you read the, the reinforcing loop backwards. Yes, yeah, so the uh, as the weed pressure increases, uh, the rate of a herbicide use will increase, so that remains the same. Um, that is, and then as the rate, rate of herbicide use increases, the risk of misapplication increases as well, um, because of course you're using more herbicide there. Now, as the risk of misapplication increases, the effectiveness of coverage of all species traits decreases. That is because um, you keep um, applying this herbicide and the more and more you apply it, of course, the weed population is going to become resistant, which is what leads to our next variable, the weed population resistant to uh, herbicides. That is going to increase. And as the weed population resistant to herbicides keeps increasing, of course, our weed pressure is going to increase. So overall, that reinforcement loop, um, that is the, uh, the fix that backfires there that, yes, in the short term, it will work, but in the long run, you're actually making the situation worse. I think uh, that's it. And uh, that is... Uh, I guess we're, we have a few minutes for uh, questions. Yeah, so if everybody would uh, unmute and uh, join back on on video. Um, I don't think we have to use yeah. A chat that came in during the presentation, Abby shared that Minnesota announced uh, the dicamba restriction uh, in that state just this morning. Uh, so it sounds like there are a lot of states moving towards a restriction of dicamba, um, particularly focusing on the plant. Um, I'm assuming due to scientific studies that are showing greater uh, weed resistance and maybe other environmental consequences with dicamba. Other, uh, well, uh, before the mentors jump in, I'd rather hear from the students first. What questions do you guys have for this team? How did you make such a nice graph? <laughs> That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. <laughs> the loop diagram. I'm sorry. Well, Thank even the, the loops. Yeah, yeah, the loops are really nice. Yeah. Wait till you see ours. We use uh, the, the Vincent. Yeah, yeah. The, the Vincent. Um, yeah. Of course, it was a lot of uh, trial and error. Uh, we got the assistance of Mr. Shree and of course of Dr. Turner to polish it up because our main uh, our big one. picture was <laughs> even bigger than that. <laughs> we had a lot of variables that actually repeated and once we got them out, we were able to condense it a little bit better. It's, it's been a fun project. It, it's very uh, extensive or, you know, information that we never thought about, you know, uh, going through this class. So, uh, well, we had a lot, uh, lot to learn, and uh, I enjoy because we can apply this to anything. You know, I was talking to uh, Doc Turner about, you know, uh, different uh, areas of life. <clears throat> so, for the the other teams um, who don't yet have access to Vensim, 
Um, we are getting that program for you. Your your mentor is getting it. I just ordered it for for my team. So in the process of downloading it. That's the program that we're going to be using for the January um, modeling webinar. So um, so we're going to get that program rolled out to you before then. If not, um, there is a free version of Vensim that you can uh, try out um, if you wanted to. You know, play around with it over Christmas break, for example. Uh, but yes, it makes pretty loop diagrams. And, and if I may add, uh, YouTube has got some uh, some videos where you can you know practice some of the stuff, or you know give you kind of instructions, you know, uh, supplemental stuff from what the professor gives you. Very cool. Other things besides how'd you make the pretty graphs? About the, <coughs> question the, the data the events the trends anything um i have a quick question so throughout the um, presentation some of you are using herbicide others pesticide are you using those terms interchangeably for this project we were we started using the word pesticide but then most of our data is actually used as herbicides. So we're slowly trying to get rid of the pesticide information and just uh, concentrate on the herbicide. That's one of the okay. things that's noted out to us. Um, but yeah, most of our information, most of our data is herbicide. Okay. <clears throat> um, can you go back to the full uh, graphical representation? Yeah, there you go. I mean, on my end, I don't know about the rest of you guys, the text is a little tough to read for some of them. That will happen in Bensim. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but especially when you're showing a, a large model mm -hmm. that is you know, very complex like this. Um, now in Bensim, you'll be able to kind of work your way around the, the window, if you will. Okay. So you will yeah. Um, for publication purposes, it's a little tough, but um, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to question your mental model to some extent. Um, so your mental model is that they believe that herbicides is the only tool. From my end, I'm wondering if it's not more due to the heavy subsidies that they get that allows them to invest in agricultural chemicals at lower cost, which motivates their use as opposed to their beliefs. That is one of the reasons also, you know, the, these policies or, or have the subsidies that that leads eventually to resistance. That's just one of the one of the uh, reasons why uh, of so many that, that we've come across. Yeah, there's there's also also other variables like we were taking into consideration how much input is being uh, placed or by farmers <coughs> and of course as more i mean yes technological advances are coming out and more uh, a new technology is coming out but still farmers cannot afford that equipment or they cannot afford to make those management changes and mm -hmm. they've been herbicides of course that's the that's the easy problem for them um, but uh, some of the farmers uh, also don't realize the total effect of continuing use of herbicides is going to have in the long run. The, the story you're developing is that applicable to only a particular scale of farmers? Um, Are you considering only industrial farming? Farming in this, <clears throat> or are you here generalizing to every farmer type? You know, this, I mean, of course, resistance or, or, or the misuse of, of, of chemicals, you know, the, the frequency used, the misuse, the misapplication, it, you know, it's going to apply to the, the small farmer to the big uh, corporation. Of course, you know, uh, when you compare uh, no, a small economies, farmer, economies of scale come into play, not uh, small yes, farmers yes, are less yes. likely to, uh, to spend a lot of money on agricultural chemicals than large industrial farmers. Yes, ma'am, and, and, and then the amount they use, you know, versus, you know, hundreds of gallons per, per acre versus, you know, one or two gallons per small farmer or, or gardener or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, just to add, like, when we came up with this mental model, 
uh, it's easy to like see only those three variables, but behind each of those variables, there are a lot of things going on. Uh, we have taken um, in general and put it as uh, the top of the list. One of many things in the comments she was making me about the policy. So Ben may be too far out. I'm having trouble hearing. I think that's the case for everyone. Sorry, Ben. Taking you out of your chair. Yeah. Making sure they understand your point about the policy uh, model because, because the incentives for the annual crops that are produced that get the bulk of uh, the chemical herbicide treatment because of those incentives, um, mm -hmm. that those um, safety nets will cover up losses. Yeah. And because those losses are covered up, there's um, that return is enough incentive to continue to apply herbicide rather than change production. Yeah. So what you're saying, Ben, is that there's a feedback between the mental model and the, the incentive, essentially. Uh, if, yes. Not that, understand. maybe not that exact mental model, but a variant of it, I would think. Yeah, so if you rephrase what was mentioned earlier about the importance mm -hmm. of subsidy, so, um, so the top part there, the belief is that, um, is that herbicide herbicide um, applications are the most cost-effective route? Exactly. The, so they, there we so go. They, so they reinvest in the annual crops, which have a large safety net, and because there's a large safety net there, um, the result would be that their losses are smaller in bad years than they should be because of the subsidized insurance and mm -hmm. disaster payments and whatnot. And so because they get a return, um, a safety net return, even in the bad years, that reinforces the idea that the herbicide is the most cost effective way to do it. I think that's her point that she was saying yep. earlier. And uh, you know, I don't know how, um, if other folks are kind of paying attention to this, I, I like the naming of the variables. Um, just overall, I think it helps you guys to really clearly tell the story. It was it was pretty easy for me to follow along. I assume that it was for for others as well. Um, it you know sometimes I think we might get hung up on the idea of doing very brief names for our variables. You know, two, three words, and, and, you know, certainly you have some that are that short, but if it helps a team to kind of explain things or to see the story a little bit clearer by, you know, writing out what the mental model is or describing next, it definitely, I think that's highly encouraged that you take that opportunity to, to do that, um, so that like uh, Dr. Turner, uh, uh, Dr. Turner always pointed out to us, to us, you know, if the reader has, you know, is left with a question or doesn't know what you're talking about, then that that uh, 50 words might you know, might be too much or might be too little, but you know, if if your uh, if your variable is, is you know, it can, if you can explain, you know, through that variable, how many letters or how many words, then you know, I mean, go with that, but. You know, the main point is understanding what, you know, for people to understand what you're trying to, to uh, uh, point out or, or say, you know, when, when choosing a, a variable or, or trying to explain your, your model or your, your flow. Yeah. Very cool. I'm going to add one last thing. Uh, <laughs> maybe complicate your lives a little to some extent. But um, when we think of weeds, weeds are are not purposefully growing somewhere. They are opportunistic plants. They grow based on whatever favorable conditions are present in that space in that time. Mm -hmm. So one aspect that's also contributing to some extent, maybe not as much as chemical use, but is, um, is climate change and changes in species ranges are allowing for weeds to conquer more territory than they would have before. 
So that it also can make up maybe a lesser priority loop, but it's something that there. you may want to, you know, explore that down the line. The disturbance regimes, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You may need to talk louder. I didn't catch oh. anything of that. Okay, so when we were uh, in, in, in the initial stages, when we were discussing about all this uh, stuff, we also came up with the climate change. Uh, uh, at that uh, point of time, we were talking more about like pesticides uh, and their relation to the climate change. But when it came to the weeds, uh, it was kind of uh, a, a very low leverage point or variable. Uh, so uh, <coughs> we kind of less emphasized on it. The weeds are not are not dispersing to an area by themselves. So climate change can impact either on the weed directly by allowing it to grow in a region it may not have grown before, or it's impacting on the dispersers by letting them spread seeds to a region further out where they wouldn't have gone before. Yeah, so it's I mean, a two level action. Because they, 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 you know, there are there are several ways. You know, weed weeds or seeds can disperse. You know, animals, humans, wind, water. You know, just uh, like I say, uh, climate. So it does it does play a, a role in in um, in weed uh, uh, where they. Uh, if you, if you want to complicate further, invasive species are another one. Mm -hmm. Weeds are invasive by definition, but uh, invasive animals that spread weeds are equally mm -hmm. a problem. Oh yeah. But and maybe just to kind of help me as well. Um, the response is the resistance, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So it, I think you have to be, I, correct me if I'm wrong, you have to be careful to not get into new invasions of weeds, but it's about increasing resistance where this, the weeds currently exist. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, they, I mean, you know. Well, new variants will add to the gene pool, right? So in, increased variety on the gene pool can also have an impact on uh, producing advantageous resistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, it, and if one plant or two plants is, is resistant and if it's not killed, you know, uh, physically, you know, manual, whatever, go out there, pull it, and, you know, it's going to These spread. two can be propagated further out, yeah. Yeah, yeah and then you're going to have more and more more plants uh, develop this this trait, which is resistant to 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 whatever herbicide. You know, uh, another thing yeah. that wasn't uh, is also it's you know the type of uh, uh, the the of active ingredient. Okay. Yeah, of active ingredient uh, used. You know, when, when you use the same active ingredient, you know some of the things uh, develop uh, uh, some of the plants develop resistance. Oh, very true. Can I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so thank you for sharing the, the full picture. Was it two slides ago? And then you broke it and showed us the fixes that backfire and then this mental model one. Yes. In the bigger picture, can you show us where this fixes that backfire and this mental model fit in? And are they, are you just pulling them out for our benefit or are those the key ones that you think drive this whole, this whole machine and that weren't the most um, attention. Um, we're. I think if you use your mouse, we should should be able to see your mouse. You follow your screen. There you go. Yeah. So our uh, fixes the backfire. Um, we actually kind of trying to combine most of our, um, I guess, variables. Okay to come up with one. We actually don't have it specifically set on the entire big picture. Um, but the reason is that we jumped a little bit further into uh, coming up with the archetype and we have, it, it's not a clear picture on the uh, big picture. Okay. It's good to know. But yes, so we incorporated try to find the new variable. So we kind of like uh, merged some of the variables, like like this loop here uh, will all fit in uh, probably the risk of misapplication because of the increased pressure on all of these things. Stuff yeah. here. 
Okay. So we kind of like modified the variable name so that it fits, you know, three Multiple or four, the loops and four the or more variables to just kind of explain this thing. Good. Well, that, that helps explain the process a little bit better. Thank you. Any other questions? I, I just have one compliment. Um, when you talked about the structure, I like how you broke it down with, you know, economics and policy and mental models. I thought that was really cool to see that. To, to, it, I think it helps the other teams to know that there are these different kind of categories of the, the structure, um, just to help kind of uncover a little bit what that structure looks like or what all of the factors that are at play um, with with, with uh, all the different structures, I guess. <laughs> Not saying it very eloquently, but, <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys so much. <laughs>